Hey, welcome investors to the 40 Finance Channel. My name's Jeff Beers. Today we're gonna to be looking at Etsy stock here as we progress into 2021. Etsy just reported their fiscal year 20 earnings and they were awesome as you probably know by now. So we'll take a quick glance at 2020 but then we'll try to answer a lot of the questions coming up for 2021. Can Etsy sustain their success into 21? What does it mean for the stock price? Answer all those questions, give you my opinion coming right up. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections, they're just my opinion for your entertainment. Please make sure you do your own research before jumping into any stock. And of course, if you like stock market analysis like this and other personal finance videos, Please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, all the things. I really appreciate everyone's support so far. All right, these numbers come directly from the recent earnings report. On a Q4 basis, year over year, you had $617 million in revenue versus $269 million uh, last year in 2019. Pretty much everything up across the board, including gross profits, uh, marketing expenditures, which I'm actually a fan of uh, for a company at this stage in their growth cycle. It was good to see uh, with increasing uh, profits, they have also managed to increase profits while basically 3Xing uh, their marketing budget, which was very nice uh, and obviously paid off well. In this report, they spent a lot of time on the returns of their marketing spend. Uh, which was good to see. Skipping down to the bottom line, uh, 2019, you had $31 million in net income. Uh, this year, $148 million. That translated down to $1.08 per share this quarter versus $0.25 cents per share last quarter. So that's Q4. Looking at the full year, 2019, $818 million. 2020, $1.7 billion. So more than a 100% gain on the revenue line. Gross profit, also more than a 100% gain at 1.2 billion versus 547. Marketing investments up as well, 500 uh, million versus 215. And the best part is when you get all the way down to the bottom, uh, net, EPS per share diluted at 269 for the fiscal year versus 76 cents last year. And one of the things that's always exciting to read in Etsy's earnings reports is they do a really nice job of um, highlighting their key wins from a product standpoint, how they are uh, improving their marketplace on both sides of the coin for buyers and sellers, and what they're doing from a sort of uh, web technology space. Okay, so some of the highlights that they call out for Q4 of 2020, their television and digital video ads in the US included both direct response ads and those designed to create an emotional connection with consumers. We ran holiday campaigns in the UK, Germany, and rolled out our first ever Spanish language ads. These campaigns delivered strong return on investment and positively impacted Etsy brand metrics, which is exciting. Brand marketing and spend, including television and digital video, was 23% of our overall marketing spend in the fourth quarter, or approximately 49 million. We launched new on-site landing page experiences to help buyers more easily navigate holiday listings and extended the duration of our cyber campaign and expanded our successful influencer partnerships. Last thing I'll call out here, Etsy, if you've been following it, they have poured a ton of time and resources into their site search this year. Uh, basically that little bar where you type in, you know, exactly what you're looking for. And it's been an interesting journey over the past six months and they've made a ton of gains. Here's a couple bullet points I think that illustrate it making additional progress, closing the semantic search gap to improve search, driving higher conversion and repeat purchase rates. As we translate search queries to what buyers actually want, show more listings and reduce null result searches. So semantic search is basically the difference between uh, what you mean and what you say. And as someone with a digital marketing background, I can tell you uh, that site search is quite indeed the science and it takes a lot of fine tuning. 
And when you're in a place like Etsy, where you have like humongous broad categories, anytime you can help the user refine their search to a more specific terminology, uh, really boost conversion rate, and that's what it looks like they're doing here. They also noticed expanding personalized search to other devices, such as our app, improving recommendations by showing same shop recommendations based on previous listing views, and adding pathways to the similar items page. All right, so a lot of big wins for Etsy, both on the financial side and profit side, and tactically, as they are really not just taking this 2020 boom of e-commerce for granted, they are rolling back into the business with increased marketing spend, site-wide improvements, they're doing things to help sellers, they're doing things to help buyers. Uh, this is a company that is growing just by more than their financial balance sheet. And the real key for me when I decided to invest in uh, late summer, early fall last year was just reading these investor reports. They're so straightforward. Um, they outline exactly what they're working on behind the scenes. And you just get a feeling from the earnings report that this company is humble about their success. They are still striving uh, to do better and they have big growth goals and they are not necessarily celebrating what happened in 2020. They're patting themselves on the back. They're excited, but they're moving on to the next challenge. That's exactly what you want out of a growth company. All right, taking a look at the stock today, uh, price coming in at 244 here on March 1st in the afternoon. Uh, looks like they're up about 11%, but that's not necessarily uh, on Etsy good news. That is more or less that we've had a uh, downward run in the market coming up to this Monday. And now all of a sudden you see the greens at the top of the board. Uh, the market is back again as bond rates have uh, gone down. So this is the roller coaster ride that we will be in. You've got an EPS today of 269. That is up year over year from 76 cents. P ratio of 90.48, which is a little high uh, on a normal year, but certainly not in this new world of gross stocks. I, for one, am just thankful that this is a gross stock with an with a EPS that has grown significantly and looks like it will continue to do so. So 90.48 in this market, unfortunately, is, is sort of a price of entry. All right, let's take a look at earnings estimates over the next year or two here on Yahoo. Uh, so we know we finished on an EPS of 269. Right now, you've got 13 analysts projecting 293 for next year's EPS. Now we've only started the month of March and typically these numbers go up over time for a company that is performing well. So I would make the assumption that Etsy is gonna hit uh, $3 EPS unless we start to see some dramatic changes in their earnings reports. If you roll $3 into the current price of 244, that would give you a forward PE of about 80. So not a lot of relief, even when we project ahead uh, from a PE standpoint. You look ahead at 2022, uh, analysts in this early projection are at $3.80. Maybe if things keep going well, that steps up to $4, and then your PE drops to about 60. But bottom line, this stock is definitely running hot, uh, just like so many of the others. Uh, going on in the market right now. So try to take advantage of dips when you see them. All right, checking in on the Tip Brings dashboard to see what the best performing analysts think of the next 12 months for Etsy. We've got all of our freshest uh, opinions coming in, most of them around four or less days, which comes right on the heels of their earnings report. And we look over at the price targets, you've got you know, 270, 245, 235, uh, they're all kind of in that range. Don't forget, today's price is 244. So if you wanted to take the average, I would say the average is in that $240 neighborhood. Uh, so like I said, the price of the stock today at 244 uh, has a lot of future earnings priced in. All right, so the storylines in 2020 for Etsy were very good. Uh, but here just today, as the kind of bond market went down and stock prices went back up again, 244 seems a little pricey for Etsy. Um, just last week on the worst time of the market, you could have gotten into Etsy right around $200. And that makes a little bit more sense. 
but it's hard to tell if we'll ever see those dips again because right now everything's so heavily focused on interest rates. The next question that you have to ask yourself as an Etsy shareholder is, can they do it again? Can they keep this up in 2021? And this is something that I thought a lot about before I even invested in them uh, last fall. So on the bear side, the critics are going to say, you know, Etsy sold a lot of masks uh, back when the pandemic first started because it's actually easier to get cloth masks off Etsy than it was to try to find them at Walmart or CVS or something like that. Etsy's shown time and time again through like three earnings reports now uh, that face masks are less than 5% of their revenue that they earned last year. So don't fall into the mask hype. That's the least of our problems. The bigger concern is the fact that, of course, you've had this huge 100% plus year, and now you have to comp those numbers going into 2021. And if you're Etsy, it's not just about comping, you have to keep showing growth. And that growth will be a little bit more challenging this year, because certainly by summer, all signs indicate that people are gonna be out and about again. There's gonna be less at-home time, uh, likely more normal vacations, uh, traveling for leisure, stuff like that. Now, on the bright side, Etsy added millions of new users last year, and they've done a really good job of getting people to come back. Even those that just went on Etsy in March to buy cloth masks, they've shown a lot of prowess in winning those consumers to come back and buy other things that are popular on Etsy. And while the concept of people getting out more is certainly on the table, the concept of home office and home is your kingdom I think still remains pretty true through 2021 and the way people are investing in their properties, uh, creating home offices, the whole telecommute kind of movement. So in that regard, I think Etsy actually surprises on the on-home segment. I think that they expand more into the crafts and arts items as we know that the consumer marketplace has generally been saving their money. So when we do have a reopening spending boom, uh, I feel pretty good that Etsy's gonna get a nice chunk of that money. So this is a chart that Etsy shared in their investor report, and it compared Etsy to baseline e-commerce growth uh, dating back to 2018. The orange line is Etsy's growth, and they measure that by gross merchandise sales. That's what GMS is. This kind of black line is standard e-commerce growth seen across the industry. So no surprise, 2020, big for e-commerce, but Etsy went far beyond uh, the average. They're saying two and a half X what the average shop grew from an e-commerce standpoint. And this dotted line here, Etsy qualifies as non-mask gross merchandise sales growth. And you see how the two lines are connecting together. So that was my point on the mass sales. It actually did create an event which helped grow Etsy, but they are not reliant on that for success uh, into future years. And the biggest win out of 2020 and how it projects into the future is just the buildup of the Etsy brand. Etsy is now one of the most recognized e-commerce brands in the United States. They're saying here they rank fourth as the largest e-commerce site by monthly visits in the U.S. So that is a huge win and it provides a lot of momentum heading into 2021. All right, so the point of showing you those things was to help you understand that while 2021 certainly has its challenges, and Etsy is not just resting on their hands expecting the same thing to work again. They used the momentum of the pandemic event to build their brand stronger. It really shows in the numbers so I feel pretty good about the future. All right, guys, so final notes on Etsy stock here on March 1st. 2020 earnings and brand growth were incredible. 269 EPS was 3X over 2019. That is phenomenal, particularly for a growth stock. Uh, the company reinvestments into marketing, site improvements, and brand building is crucial, and I love what that means for 2021 and beyond. Consumer priorities will change in 21, but Etsy marketplace shifts as well. Don't forget, we're talking about a marketplace that is essentially run by independent sellers, 
they have the power to change their full inventory and shift to the hottest trends at any point. So Etsy isn't held down like a traditional retailer where they have to wait for you know new stock and inventory. The best sellers will change their inventory on a dime to take advantage of the hottest trends, and that's good news for Etsy. Other note on here, international growth is encouraging. This is very similar to Pinterest, uh, where the growth across the seas, you know, we don't talk about it a lot, but they are doing good things in there. Remember, they just launched their first Spanish language ad campaign there in Q4. So there's a lot of potential in that space. All right, on the bear case, like I said, you're comping an incredible year, so expectations are high. How far does the current scale run? So they're doing a great job of adding more revenue while simultaneously increasing marketing spend and profits and the work that they're doing on their network and website. How long can they keep doing that before the costs of scaling start to overtake the price of profits? I think they've got a few more years at least, but it's one thing that you have to watch for. Number four, valuation is high. You got an 80 forward PE. You got a price of 244. We saw on tip ranks, most analysts are in that 240 to 250 range. So you're definitely buying it at the top uh, today. But on the bright side, last week when the market was uh, in a much more weaker mode, it dipped under $200 uh, when those interest rates were threatening. So just be patient. You'll find a good time to jump in. And finally, for my camp, I love this stock. My cost basis is $133. Um, I'm holding for long. I suggest you do the same. Wait for under $220 to start a new position. That's my opinion. Who knows when that will come? but I do believe you'll see it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at Etsy stock. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you did. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.